Hi all of you. Welcome back to the YouTube channel Biochemistry for Doctors. So here we are to discuss another reason out type question, right? So why do you use fructosamine in diabetes mellitus? So do you use fructosamine in diabetes mellitus? Yes. Do you measure fructosamine in diabetes mellitus? So before knowing that, you must know what is a fructosamine. So here, what is glycated hemoglobin? We know we use HbA1c. Yes, HbA1c to diagnose diabetes mellitus. So there is a this is the glycated hemoglobin. So the hemoglobin is non-enzymatically glycated. If you have hyperglycemia, right? If you have hyperglycemia, then you find more levels of HbA1c, which is which will be characteristic finding in case of diabetes mellitus. All right, but not just hemoglobin, even with the other uh, other proteins, right? Other serum proteins, the glucose can get non-enzymatically glycated. So that will be a uh, protein, serum proteins. If you take the most abundant one is going to be the albumin, right? So you find glycated albumin in the circulation, glycated globulin in the circulation. Also other glycated serum proteins you find in the circulation, right? So whenever there is hyperglycemia, then you find all your proteins to be glycated. Is it not? Non-enzymatically glycated. Now all these are, except glycated hemoglobin, all of the serum proteins, if it is going to be glycated, then they are called serum gly glycated serum proteins, right? Or fructosamine. Yes, or fructosamine. So let's just get deeper into knowing the structure of a fructosamine. But what did we see now? It's a glycated serum protein, right? Fructosamine is a glycated serum protein and albumin is the most abundant serum protein. So I can call fructosamine as a measure of the glycated albumin, is it not? So I can call fructosamine as a measure of glycated albumin. Now, it, this is the structure of a ketoamine arrangement product. Okay, so how is it formed? It is formed by the interaction, non-enzymatic interaction of glucose with epsilon amino group of lysine right so lysine in which the amino group you have the in the side chain you have the amino group so that amino group is attached to the epsilon carbon so epsilon amino group of lysine residues of your albumin so this is the structure of the glycated glycated serum protein right and that happens non-enzymatically so that is what is fructosamine now this is used as an average index of this is the index of average blood glucose of over two to three weeks. So whereas HbA1c, as you all know, it is it is a measure of the average blood glucose over the past three months, right? But in case of albumin, in, sorry, in case of fructosamine, it tells us about the average blood glucose over two to three weeks, right? So the increased level of this fructosamine is associated with prolonged hyperglycemia for two to three weeks. All right. So if you have higher fructosamine value, then you should say that there is a poor glycemic control. All right. So if the higher value is bringing is coming back to normal, yes, then you can say that your treatment is working. Yes, the way you treat is good. And since the but 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 since it's not used routinely, no, it's not used routinely because it has its own advantage uh, disadvantages. That is even with well controlled people or with those who are not diabetic okay well controlled diabetic and who are not diabetic you their the levels may overlap and you can't distinguish them so in that case you can't use it as a screening test okay in that case you can't use it as a screening test because screening test if you find this as a normal value then uh, you won't be able to distinguish between a non diabetic and a well controlled diabetic right so in that level, it is not used as a screening test. But how do you use it? Always we use it along with HbA1c. And of course, we have specific indications for it. That is, if you want to see the effect of the change in diet, exercise and medication over the past six weeks, then you can use this fructosamine levels. And if you want uh, in a diabetic woman, you find a diabetic woman, that is, you find elevated blood glucose level in a woman who is who has recently become pregnant and you want to know the time frame 
then if you want so for that you can know then you want a time frame of when it has started whether she is diabetic before pregnancy or after uh, before a consumption or after consumption for that case you can use this fructosamine levels and conditions in which hba1c is unreliable so there are conditions in which you may not you may not uh, diagnose correctly with the levels of you cannot rely on the hba1c level what are those conditions they especially hemoglobinopathy right and then if uh, like for example sickle cell anemia and other hemolytic anemias or any recent blood loss right and whenever the lifespan of rbc is very less yes in those cases you can't rely on the hba1c level because what is hba1c it is nothing but the hemoglobin getting glycated so the heme anything that is affecting that it is going to affect your hba1c levels also now it is of no use fructosamine is of no use in conditions that are affecting your albumin concentration in conditions that are affecting your protein concentration right so in case of nephrotic syndrome cirrhosis of liver dysproteinemias or in rapid changes of acute phase reactants or whenever your albumin is less less than 3 yes so the in those cases less than 3 g per deciliter in those cases you can't use fructosamine right and you can't use it as a diagnostic criteria for diabetes or for screening uh, gestational diabetes mellitus the only thing in which you can use is yes the first thing is whenever hba1c is not reliable okay whenever the hba1c is not reliable then in that case you can use this fructosamine also when you want to check a recent recent change okay 2 to 3 week change or 2 to 3 week uh, hyperglycemia in that case you can use you can use fructosamine so how do you determine this you determine this by boron affinity chromatography it's very good very good uh, methodology right this is also a good methodology for estimating hba1c even and hplc of glycated lysine residues after you hydrolyze glycated proteins and also you have photometric methods all right so normal values will vary depending on your serum albumin concentration so if your serum albumin level is 5 g per deciliter then your fructosamine levels should be 200 to 285 millimole per liter all right so this this is a normal value and that will vary in relation to your serum albumin also all right yes so this is all about fructosamine so let's meet again with another reason out the next video but before that please download the app clinical biochemistry it is up like uh, it is uh, you know it is available for both android users and apple users all right so you have a complete course for md biochemistry also you have a complete course for mbbs biochemistry so please do download the app yes for more video subscribe the youtube channel right thank you all